catch up on that class. All right, so I already have code for the count even, um, uh, the count even numbers, right? Uh, but before you look at the code, you notice here that if you think about it, right, the question is saying we count, we count the number of even numbers that are between zero and 10. If you were to form a mental picture, you know that the even numbers between zero and 10, including 10 is zero, two, four, six, eight. So how many are there? I mean, we could have just as well have said, count the number of even numbers between zero and 100, for instance, right? Doesn't matter. So immediately you realize here that um, for you to, to come up with a solution, um, you go through this series of steps and it's pretty easy, right? The initial values that you identify already is uh, zero and 10, right? Zero and 10. Initial values, zero, right? Why zero? Because zero is the first even number that we're going to process. 10, why 10? 10 because 10 is the last even number that we want to process in our range, right? And in fact, not only that, we're going to use 10 as, as a value to, to check whether or not we should branch out of our loop, right? Usually, I mean, for the problems we've been looking at, it's just BGT we've been working with. But it could be that you might actually um, end up working with a different instruction or operation, right? Maybe BOT. If the question was like, uh, 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 if the question required you to work with negative numbers, for instance, you notice that you'd probably have to work with BOT. Right? If the range was negative, let's say negative 10 to zero, for instance. It's like you're going in the opposite direction now. Okay, and then something else you realize here is that um, we also need to keep track of, we need a variable to keep track of the, the count, because you have to ask yourself, how are we going to be counting the number of even uh, numbers in the range? So the idea is you, you, if you think about it, you process, you process the numbers one by one. Once you get into that loop, you check if zero uh, is, you first of all check if zero is greater than 10, which it's not. Um, and then the processing requires that you first of all divide zero by two, because you know that an even number, you know, even numbers are, are divisible by two, right? Without leaving any remainder, the remainder must be zero. Um, so what you, what you must do is you divide the, the number you're processing by two, um, and then check if the remainder is equal to zero. If the remainder is equal to zero, then you know that it's an even number, right? So you need, um, uh, we'll call this variable x1 to uh, keep track of count. And then you probably need another variable that's going to keep track of remainder. Is it making sense? And then for the conditions, you know that the condition is simple. You branch out of loop if value is greater than 10. Right? Effectively, what we're saying is this BGT here. BGT, whatever value, assuming the values are going to be here, then uh, you're going to go to some, to some label, let's say triple X, Y, 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 or something. Is this making sense? Uh, so when you're working with problems to do with loops, the, the initial values are really important. Implem yes. Okay, we're just working, working through the process and then I'll walk, walk through the example. Uh, which part are you not clear with? Sorry? Yes.
What? The states. Are they falling under Uganda or It's the name. <coughs> yeah, not the data. So you, you know why the steps are important? Do you know why the steps are important? For you to systematically come up with a solution, you just don't start writing things down. You, you need to form a mental picture of the steps that you need to follow for you to process the question. And I do hope this is what you did for the reboot, right? Probably not. It, it turns out that it makes life a lot easier that way. So this is like we're coming up with pseudo code, the things that we'd have to do. In fact, I'll just say, I'll remove this if it's confusing, right? We'll see if it makes sense once we go to the code here. Implementation of the loop body of us is, is going to be trivial once you, you know the initial values and uh, the branch conditions to use, right? Modification of the values. You know that the modification of the values will involve you um, altering what? You must alter the, the numbers that you're processing somehow, right? So, um, uh, and because our implementation is, check, is checking we're working with natural numbers and our implementation is checking each of the natural numbers one by one, you know that um, you must increment, increment uh, numbers by one. In fact, this is, this, is, this is probably the only thing that we're modifying, right? We're in increment, because the reason we want to modify the values is we want to get to a stage where we are processing the next number in the range. So we process zero, we want to process one, we want to process two, we want to process three. So we have to increment this value by one so that we get to the next number, right? Modification of initial values, uh, well, it's, well, it's just altering, altering, altering some of the values that you've initialized in step one so that you eventually get to a stage where you terminate or you get out of the loop, number one, and also so that you process the next item in the range or in the list. Well, so we, we, are, we, we are saying we are not, uh, we, we, we are trying to use a different approach for even numbers. The formal definition of an even number is uh, a number that is divisible by two, right? So what we'd be doing in our range is, if we're working with natural numbers from zero, zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and 10, for each of these numbers we're saying, we check to see if it's an even number. How do we check if, how do we check if one is an even number? We divide one by two. What is the remainder if we divide one by two? The remainder is one. When we check the remainder, because the remainder is not zero, then we know that it's not an even number. We get to two, we divide two by two, the remainder is zero, right? And because the remainder is zero, we know it's an even number. And so we, we, we count it as an even number. So we just add one to the variable that's... Well, because we need to process the next number in the range. We got the example, maybe I'll walk you through the example. I have an example here. And then repeating the body here is, uh, uh, is, is, is as simple as, um, as just saying, you know, we branch unconditionally to whatever label you have here. And someone uh, did ask the other time, I think it was Kevin, I don't know if it was Kevin or somebody else, I don't know if it was uh, Blessed or something else, asking him to say, can we not use J instead of branch? You can if you want to. You end up with the same result, right? In all these different cases, you're telling the CPU to say you want to go to the address represented by this label, right? Um, so in terms of the complete code here, just to walk through the, see how you map on this uh, pseudo code here to what we just did, you notice that it's, it's not that hard. Um, not that hard at all. Right, so in terms of the steps, you notice that line number, um, from line number 13 to 16, um, I'm defining the initial values that we're going to be working with, right? Um, and I think our description didn't include the two here because you need to keep track of the number that you're going to use as a divisor, right? Uh, so we are saying here that line number 13, the register eight is going to hold, it's the one that's going to keep track of the numbers that we're processing. So when you're processing zero, we're going to put zero into register eight. 
The next time we're processing one, we're going to put one into register eight. The next time we're processing two, we put it into eight, which is why eight is holding the initial value zero, right? Representing the uh, numbers that we'll be processing. And then register nine is going to hold the maximum number that we're going to use as a condition, the last even number that we wish to process. And we need this for the condition, right? Um, and then in line number 15, we're saying that register 10 is going to hold, it's going to hold our count. Because we want to count these things, we need to, counting is a lot easier if you start from zero, just like summation, you start from zero, right? Um, so if we want to start counting the even numbers, we know that we will we'll initially have to start with the zero. Once we start processing the numbers, we check is the zero, the zero result in a remainder of zero and divided by two. If it does, then we shall add one to the register 10. So it's zero plus one. Once we process one, one divided by two results in a remainder of one. So we cannot count that as an even number. We don't add one to the register 10. But once we process two, two by two returns a remainder of zero, and then we add one to the register 10 here, right? Um, and then 16 is basically just holding the number two because there's no easier way of dividing, uh, dividing the, even, the, the even numbers, the, the numbers we're going to be processing by two. We're saying we're going to keep track of the two here into register 11, right? Initial values. And then implementation of the loop here starts from line number 18 all the way up to, um, uh, it's supposed to be line number 24. It's a bit of a mistake here. B loop label. So we are starting from line number 18 all the way up to line number 24. But observe what's happening here in the implementation. I said that the first thing that you typically do is you check if the condition is satisfied. Because we do know that uh, the loop works in this way. When you check the condition, if it is satisfied, if it's true, or if it's yes, it results in a yes, then you process the instructions under the loop body. If it's not satisfied, if it's a false or if it's a no, then you ignore the loop body and just start processing the instructions that follow after the loop body. And typically you will have instructions when you're working with, um, I guess, complex code, you will have instructions immediately after the loop body. Right? Right, so we check the condition first here, saying, check if the value that's in register eight at which point it's zero is greater than the value that's in register nine. Register nine has 10. So we know that uh, zero is not greater than 10, so we can't branch to print even. What do we do? We go to line number 20. Line number 20, we're saying we're going to divide the number that is in register eight by what is in 11. What is in 11 will always be two because we're trying to divide the numbers by two, uh, by following our heuristic or our step, right? Yeah, so we divide uh, what's in eight uh, by two, and then we, 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 we keep track of the remainder. We said that when you're working with a DIV function, or operator, or operation, the, cost, the, the, the result the result of dividing a number by, by divisor is going to be in the low register. The remainder is going to be in the high register. Right? The actual answer is in the low, the remainder is in the high register, which is why in line number 20, we are saying that we want to move from the high register, the value that's in high register, move it to register 12. So essentially we're saying, move the remainder of dividing what's in eight by two into 12. Yeah. Um, once you move it into 12, uh, in line number 22, we are saying, we will check if what is in 12 is equal to zero. Because essentially what we're saying is we want to count a number as an even number if, if it has a remainder of zero. And how do we check if it has a remainder of zero? In this case, we're saying we will use BEQ, branch if equal. So branch if the remainder is equal to zero, which is why we're using special purpose register zero here. <clears throat> we, we branch to count even in this case, right? So we're saying if, uh, if this is zero, then go to count even. You notice at this stage, flow, pro program flow will be transferred to where there's count even. Count even is in 26, so we'll ignore this stuff here. We'll move to 26. 
Once we get to 26, we start processing what's under 26 because the label is nothing more than like a series of code that you have to execute, right? So we go to line number 27. We add one to whatever is in register 10. Why? Because we've defined as an initial value register 10 to hold the counts. So because zero is an even number, it returns the remainder of zero and divided by two, we count it as an even number by adding one to what is in 10. After we add one to what is in 10, we say we want to move and start processing the next number in the range, which is obviously going to be one. So for us to move from zero to one, we just add one to what's in eight, right? So eight is zero here, we add one, it will be a one. We are modifying, in this case in line number 28, we are modifying the initial value so that we process the next number in the range so that we eventually get out of the loop. If you don't do this, you will never get out of the loop, right? And your machine will probably crash or run out of resources. And then in line number 29, we are saying once we modify the value, we loop, repeat. So we're branching to loop body, uh, loop label here. So once we just say B loop label, we'll move from line number 29, we'll move to line number 18. And then you notice that in line number 18, we start doing what we did before over and over again, right? Like Sisyphus here, right? So because eight is one, we're going to say branch if one is greater than 10, because nine is 10. It is not. We come here because eight has one, we're saying one divided by two. We, we move whatever remainder returns from dividing one by two. We know the remainder is going to be one, right? So we'll move the value that is in 12. I mean, so the value that is in the high register, which is the remainder to the register 12, which is a one. We come here in line number 22. Branch if one is equal to zero. One is not equal to zero, so we shall not branch here. We can't go to count even. What do we do? We process line number 23, right? In line number 23, we do what we did in line number 28. We're just modifying the value. Because one is not an even number, we don't wish to count it. We mustn't count it. What do we do? We just say, uh, if, if, it's, if it's not an even number, just modify the initial value so that you move to the next number in line and process that and check, that if, if, check it if it's an even number, which is why we are adding one here to, um, to what's in eight. So uh, because eight has one, one plus one is two. And then we repeat. And then you notice here that we, we, now, we now have a value of uh, two in eight. We say, uh, is two greater than 10? No, it's not. So we divide two by two. Two by two is just, uh, what's two by two? It's one remainder zero, right? At, at this point, right, when you say div uh, eight comma 11, it's like div two comma, comma two. When you execute this, when the CPU ex executes this um, instruction here, what will happen is the low register will have one, the high register will have zero. Because the low register has the result, the high register has the remainder. We move what is in the high register, which is the remainder to, uh, we move that value to the register 12. So essentially we're saying move, um, move zero to 12. And then we come here. Branch if equal, if zero is equal to zero, branch to count. So because uh, we're branching to count, we add one to whatever is in 10. At this point, what is in 10 is a one, so we add one to this two. So you notice that once you're done processing two, you'd have counted zero and two as even numbers and you'd not count one as an even number. So you have a count of two. You do this over and over again and you notice that you're working with three, it's like you're working with one, right? The same thing. You're working with four, it's like you're working with two. So you're, you're, you're doing two, two, two different things as you're executing this loop here. Program flow is transferred to count even when it's an even number. Program control is not transferred anywhere if it's an odd number. Do you understand this? And so when you execute this, uh, yes, sir. To call? The system. The system? Yeah, after line 24. What do you mean call the system? Uh, no. <laughs> this is, so, Blessed came through yesterday, right? And it's like, 
why is this printing you uh, something? I don't know. And I was telling him, it took a while. Usually, if you're not part of the writing process of the code, it, it, it's, it's a pain to debug, right? And it turns out that he was calling, um, he was issuing a syscall instruction every after like a, a branch or something. You only, I say it, this, you only issue a syscall when you're requesting a service from the operating system. What services? Read an integer, print an integer, read a string, print a string, read a double, print a double, right? Those are the services that you, you, by convention, you only use a syscall if you are requesting a service from the kernel. We're not requesting a service anywhere here. So if we're printing the number somewhere, we would do that. If we're exiting, we would do that. So there's no, no reason to do that. Right. So that means that uh, the first part and the second part of those two instructions, they are one. But, uh, the first part and? Yeah. And 26 to 29. Yes. Is it, does it mean that they are one? The last meeting you said you're supposed to end the program so that it does not proceed to the next. I don't know. Oh, no, no, they, yeah, these are one. No, no, I said uh, you typically do this in the, yeah, I know what you're talking about here. It's, um, <laughs> I, I see what you mean here. It, it, so in this case, right, it's, um, because of the implementation, we know that there will never be a time when we get out, we'll never get out of this loop. The only time we get out of, the, the only time we'll be able to process what comes after a loop label here is what? Is if? Are we, is there, is there a condition, if you think about it, if you look at line number 18 to 24, is there a, a scenario where we would process if there was something in line number 25? Well, if we had this, um, is there any, can you think of any scenario, if you think about this, can you think of any scenario where line number 26 would be executed here? Never. Think about this for a second. Because when you, you see program flow, right? Program flow is always from top to bottom. Like instructions are executed one after the other from top to bottom. So we start from line number 13, right, main. We execute this, we execute this, we execute this, we execute this, we don't execute this because it's a blank. We come here, it's a label, we start executing things that are in the label. The moment we execute this, it's like a condition we're checking if uh, this is greater than this. If it's not, if, if this condition returns false, we process here. If 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 it's true, then we're going to move to print even. Not, this will never be executed. You can't, there's never a time when this will ever be executed. So there's no reason to have, uh, to gracefully exit the program. But really, I mean, there's no harm in including it there. It's just that you're just increasing overhead, right? Because there's really no point in doing that. Do you guys understand this? Yes, okay. All right, so, so you notice that, uh, you know, so the, if the count makes sense, right? If the count, in branching to the count makes sense, you know, where you're counting even numbers, um, you notice that uh, when, we, when we get to a stage where eight is 11, for instance, right? We're just fast forwarding to 11. We've processed zero up to 10 and then we get to 11. We'll come here, once we increment 10 by one, it's 11, we'll loop back here. We'll check, is 11 greater than 10? It is. And then we shall, program flow will be transferred to where print even label is. So we'll jump to line number 31, right? And you notice that what's in line number 31 is nothing more than us saying, oh, okay, line number 31 is uh, where, what you asked, we wish to print the sum. Because the sum is an integer, we must, uh, make use of system call code one to print the integer, which is why we're saying we're loading the value one into V0. Um, and then, because this count, not the sum, sorry, the count is being held in register 10, we move the value of the count when we branch out of this loop to A0. And then we issue uh, the syscall here, and then we'll be able to print the, the count. Once we print the count, again, program flow goes from top to bottom, so we're in here, right? We print, we execute 32 to 34, 
we print um, the count, and then this line number 35 won't be executed because it's a blank. We come to line number 36. CPU is like, oh, this guy wants to branch to this label, right? So we will transfer program flow to 38 from here. We go to 38. And then in 38, uh, CPU says, oh, this guy wants to uh, load 10 into V0, and then issue his call. He wants to exit gracefully. And then we exit the program. And that's, that's it, right? And so you run this, and you'll be able to, to kind of like uh, print the sum of, uh, of the count, sorry, of uh, just to test drive it, I guess. You'll be able to uh, count. You'll be able to print the six that you want there, right? And really, if you wanted, you could, uh, I mean, just check for good measure, maybe just check to see if this works. You could just say, I want to count a number, I want to count the number of even numbers from zero to 20, including 20. So just change that. Um, then I come here and check what the answer is going to be, and hope this is correct, and it's, it's 11 numbers, right? Um, it's not that hard. 